Another edition of Wrestling with Attitude from Charlotte, North Carolina, the best wrestling podcast out there today. With your host, the intellectual savior of the masses, the Summit. If we have any six foot five women yeah. that are interested, Steven Single our D Generation Sex, Bo Generation. And the mouth of the Carolinas, little Steven. Don't be talking to the 18-day champion like that. Faux conversationalist person. Faux hey. horrible. The former six-month champ, the melting pot, JP. Just go back and do that, RVD. Go back to Philadelphia. I'm sure there's a bingo hall. You can sweep the floors, you know, give the old ladies another marker. Little Steven, little Steven. And this man makes wrestling attitude live to his standards. Dirty Dutch. I, mean, I like to watch Jesse Gabriel until he got whooped by Goldberg. You ruined my core. Yeah. You can listen to us on Stitcher, iTunes, and Spreaker. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and tweet us at WWA Show. Wrestling with Attitude. All right, welcome to Wrestling with Attitude on Stitcher, Spreaker, and iTunes. Joining me today, of course, the madman. For, are you North Carolina? I was going to say, I'm not from South Carolina anymore. Okay, right? the madman from North Carolina, around the block. <laughs> I'm <laughs> really Candace. literally five minutes from the studio now. Well, there you go. Stu. And then, of course. <laughs> <laughs> that's what, that's what. He, he's what? just stew from the block. <laughs> it's and a I, stew. Can I, can, and, and one quick thing. Every yeah. time yeah, you say, or you do the intro, <clears throat> and it plays it, and then you repeat it, where you can find this show, and you say Spreaker, I always think you're mispronouncing the word. No. I know you're not, but I'm like, dude, the word speaker. But <laughs> It's not. Dude. I know it's not, but it just, that Spreaker, I mean, just, that is a word that bugs me. It's like somebody yeah, made, yeah. The, obviously made the word up for the website, yeah. for the... To podcast host or whatever, but it just doesn't fit with me. So the man that's arguing with me is stupendous. Hello. And then his tag team partner, which we'll go into, is the guy with the very bad bandana. I don't, I don't know if it's a bandana or what it is. It looks like armpit of the shirt. Steven. The Black Plague. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bubonic. The mouth. Is that what we're going to call it now? <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't forget, and, and, also the winner of Slide uh, Flu. Slide Flu. Yeah. And, 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 and by the way, yeah, we'll, we'll tell everyone just how close this team is getting later in the show, okay? Oh, yeah. We will tell everyone. They, just, you know, yeah, save that. And then, of course, that one is JP, the melting pot. Of course. And listen, I need you to play me some music because, <laughs> listen, we need to get serious for a minute, all right? Something terrible happened this last week. And I believe that we all knew it was coming at some point in time. We just didn't know when, and we just didn't know how, and we didn't know who the other party was that would be involved. <laughs> but Brock Lesnar killed Jamie Noble. He tried to kill Jamie Noble. Jamie Noble is injured at the hands of the beast, people. I can't help it. I can't help it anymore, It's man. the music. We, it's the we, damn we, music. We, we, listen, we you, knew from day one, we were like, one day, Brock's going to legit hurt somebody. No, he did. And he legit hurt Jamie Noble hey, on Monday this, night. Is this he, sad enough? Yeah. He right. broke three of that man's ribs. That's all I'm going to say. Like, legit, son. I thought Jamie Noble was dead. No, he looked pretty bad. It I, was terrible. I, I missed it. What happened? <laughs> yeah. I, well, I must have been moving. But, but basically, basically, they all went to jump Brock. Yeah. And then Brock got a hold of one. He got a hold of Jamie Noble. Let's just say three rails got broke. And did so, he throw him out of the ring? Um, did what? I'm trying to remember what he did. He was he was outside. outside yeah. Okay. And because Kane drug him down the ropes. Yep. Okay. From the top. And when he came down, Jamie Noble jumped on his back. So did uh, Mercury, uh, Joy. But he Jamie Noble he took Jamie Noble. And ran him into the barricade. Ooh, yeah. And he really yeah. got hurt because at the end, everybody got in the ring except for Noble. Yeah. I was going to say, 
you, you guys watch enough wrestling to – I still can't figure it out. What, what – obviously that guy gave the telltale sign. What is the telltale sign when somebody's really hurt? When they throw X. Yeah. It, if you ever see anyone lay on the ground or they're in a corner and they, they do anything with their hands and an X, like their hands or their arms. Does that mean wrap that, it up? That, 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 that means, hey, I'm lot legit hurt. The people from the back are coming yeah. down. Yeah. And they ended up, I think they ended up taking Jamie Noble out on the stretcher because of the ribs. Because, I mean, you know, that area you don't know. But, yeah, the, and that's why I, I tried to kind of make a joke about Lesnar killing somebody. But it, I'm telling you, man, Lesnar, Lesnar, if you don't put him with the right person, I mean, I hate to say it, this is what can happen because that's who Lesnar is, man. It seems like who's who are the guys like Big Show and Kane are like the only guys seems like they're big enough. Cena, and, Cena does okay Cena's with big him because he's big Triple enough. H. Triple H. I mean, those guys. But we're the talking, super heavyweights. Right. We're talking about Jamie Noble who's probably shorter well, than Little Steven. I mean, remember well, is, Roman Reigns stood up for him. Yeah. You know, I mean, he took all the beating. But, again, bigger guy. But I mean, bigger, going yeah. about yeah. Six, eight, six, nine. Yeah, what so. is Lesnar's dimensions? Six eight six yeah. I would probably say six eight six nine, and he got he got probably goes a legit two sixty two seventy. Now so he's, I mean, not, big, he's not bigger than Kevin Nash. Now hey, I do have to same say same size though. I'm saying like if you looked at Nash in his heyday, Brock's a little more muscular, like way muscular, but Nash may have been a little bit taller, but still basically the same size guy. I I think Rollins will be able to handle. <laughs> of course I, you do. No, I'm just – because he – no, I'm, I'm just saying I think he will. I, do I think he'll be able to do things? Probably not. But I think – I mean, because he's – dude, he does that CrossFit all the time and everything else. So, I mean, I, I, anyway, that's but, a different I ain't going to get on that. I'm going to tell you what the – Running around with some weights and flipping a yeah. tire is one thing. No, but no. picking up Brock Lesnar is another story, my man. Yeah. <laughs> no, I wasn't saying, saying he's gonna be. Able, yeah. I didn't say yeah. he's gonna be able to pick him up. I, I, know I just say I, know I think mean. he'll be able to take a beating. Yeah, if he picks him up, that'd will. be amazing. <laughs> I don't think he will. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, we wanted to talk about something that's coming up. Uh, we're going to start a little tag team thing. Yeah, we uh, didn't get to pick these, by the way. Go ahead and let it be known. <laughs> I was told who my tag team partner would be. Well, no, 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 you're, no, no, no. Well, your tag team partner pretty much you. said from the start, I'm you. taking Stupendous. That's he right. He said, said from the start. He picked you from oh, the start. Oh, you drafted. So, yeah. Yeah. My so, swan flew over there. Right. So, guess what? He guess got what? drafted. Here's how it went. The champ had the number one pick. You were the first overall pick. That's but right. it's kind of like the NFL. That means you're going to, like, the Browns. I mean, <laughs> time, 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 time out, time out. You, you won the last pay-per-view pick them? Yeah. Yeah. And that's how this all went. Yeah, because yes. 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 I, I, wanted, I wanted to do You're this. in cahoots. <laughs> the fix is in. Cahoots. Oh, oh. No, you too, because who? you knew this down the pipeline. You were going to do this, and you were like, hey, let's take no, my no, We know uh, Stu's not going to know the damn I, who's going to win the paper. I'm going to stop you. Guess whose idea this was? His. This was all, all him. him. All his. He gets all the credit. Who I get first pick? So, I mean, hey. Yeah. Hey, I'm taking stupid. Stu, I'm, I'm going to say it one more it, time. It, I don't think you want to be it, my tag team partner. Well, you tried to put me in the infirmary <laughs> earlier with, with Tainted Goldfish. It's almost like, hey, hey, if Stu doesn't go along with this, I'm going I'm to infect him with, with, my, with, with my goldfish. You, Literally, tell the story about listen, that. No, but I'm being serious. Me, me and JP is not lying. He came to us last week and said, let's do this little tag team thing. All right, we'll do it. He said, I'm taking Stu. Yep. I, was I, like, I, I thought it might help their relationship over here, you know, like because their relationship's getting really but on the edge. Okay, but, but so <laughs> sometimes you got to be careful with that because you create monsters you, you know, don't I, enjoy. And, I, and when I when I heard about this, I had no problem with it. And then you know, I started getting to know Stephen. And it's really, <laughs> well, 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 well but before we, before we started the show, Steve, Stephen, just to let don't everybody, touch me, smart just, blue. just to let everybody out there know. Steven has this deal where every week he brings in a bag of the little goldfish to eat. So, Stu is sitting there before we start the like show. Catrice. And I've gotten him plenty and, of time for Right, him. and so Stu, like, holds out his hand like an eight-year-old kid. So, of course, you know, Dad's like, here you go. Here's some goldfish. <laughs> so, Stu takes the goldfish in his hand, and no sooner than they hit his hand, James looks right at Stu and is like, hey, you know Steven is sick. And he's like, what? And it got real serious. So, like, they're, they're even trying to share germs. They're trying to share sickness with each other. They're trying to share it all. Hey, hey, Steven goes, hey. uh, yeah, it's just uh, something in my throat. I don't, yeah. I don't think it's that yeah. big of a deal. You're but, fine. And then he tries to hand me a vitamin C packet right behind me. <laughs> <you. laughs> yeah, like, 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 you know what? Just hey, take down. Just take this. Hey, 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 Steve, listen. Now Steve, that I'm looking, he's got Steve, a drug. Steven, <laughs> Steven <laughs> takes vials very seriously. 
And when he made this tag team, it was in sickness and in hell. Right. So, so you're in for the long haul, buddy. Is it because of the bandana? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, bad dad. Dude, he's they loving are, it. Listen, he's loving it. Listen, I do have to say, they are both wearing <laughs> t-shirt sleeve bad dad. I'm, I'm, right. trying, I'm, I'm hold, trying to at least unify this a little bit, but, but he's making it real hey, damn hard. But hold on, hold on a second. If anybody catchy be here on the show, if we had video table, which we did, and you see Stu wearing, but okay, that looks cool. Then you look at yeah, Captain Steven. D. Chef or tuck, whatever. Tuck it in, in the side. Tuck it in the side. <laughs> there you go. You're you know, to pull you know the front down I, a little bit more. I, it's too hot on the I forehead. Fig, I figured out what sets Stu's band down apart. It's the hair, man. Yeah. Yeah, hair. I know. He's got he's got the cool bitch no, hair. Over but there. no, you you like you've got the whole thing showing like That's you're, what I'm saying you gotta tuck it in on you, the You you look like you need donations to cancer. Hey, you know what? You know what we're gonna do? You know what we should do? Much we should, better. We should do <laughs> There you go, do, that's a lot better. We should do a video the for hair. we should do a video for the website. And it's called How to Wear a T shirt sleeve as a bad dad and it's gonna be star stupendous. Yeah, yeah, and not yeah. how to wear one. And he, yeah, yeah, he's like no, and he can be like step one. Good example, cut you know. a cut a shirt. <laughs> step two. Now that looks a lot better. <laughs> it does. Yeah, yeah. it does, it but does. you still look like an idiot. Let me but it's like, like, it kinda looks like now the word mouse is across. <laughs> you know, yeah. all right, first off, I don't want to hear anything from Mr. Blind Guy over here. Oh, I can see if you can see this guy over here. He's got the big Bingo Hall glasses on. He just came nope. from ECW. Nope. You just nope. Nope. I, I'm just I'm waiting for me and Mister. Hey, guess what? what? At least he was at ECW, not PWX. <laughs> oh. No, no, I was gonna say. Wow. Well, he was I, I was gonna, I was gonna say XWW. Yeah. So, but listen, there's <laughs> yeah. a reason. There. There's a reason I have this on. There's a reason. You know, we'll we'll share. Once Come we on, well, first off, well, first off, I gotta ask: Do you, do the two of you? I mean, you don't even have a name for your other show yet, but do you have a name for your tag team? Oh, uh, no. <laughs> oh, no, no. You ask, you ask Steven, hey, he tells you. That's the you. name. Oh, uh, no. No, you ask Steven. They have a tag team What name. did you come up with? You're, since you're doing everything, <laughs> just, I'm kind of being drug along. What, what did you do? I, I don't want to do it now. Yes, you do. Yes, yes you, you do. do. Go ahead and say it. You've been saying it for a week. Have you been saying it? Say we could be the bandanas. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen. Okay, and how this is going to go. I love this guy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> he just makes you know it. What? You know what? You know what? For A for effort, we, we're, we're, we're going to change it eventually. But, got, to, but today, we'll go with the hey, bandana. If, if, if you take submissions, you could call yourself the Studanas. That's right. Ooh, I like that. Studanas is pretty good. That's not a bad one. <laughs> you see, but no, you couldn't come I, out. I, I, I tell you what, this week I'm, I'll, I'll do the bandanas. I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll get down on the bandanas. <laughs> Let's put it out there the, the to, law, the, to the, the people. Because we are the people's the champions. Lost yeah, bandanas. we're the people's the, the, champions. No, no, the lost bandanas. <laughs> <laughs> the lost bandanas. El Pollo Loco over there. The crazy chicken. <laughs> Oh. El Pollo Diablo. El Diablo uh, means like fighting chicken or the something. The devil like chicken. That. <laughs> no, you would be the devil chicken. He'd be the first one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but we can put it to the people and they can uh, submit uh, yeah. name ideas. Yes. Uh, yeah, that's what, we're, that's what they need to do. Yeah, I, I agree. They do need to do well, you, And you know what? Yeah, you, hey. you know what? You could take a picture of the two of us and put it up there and say, caption. And I yeah. really am afraid about what they're <laughs> going to do. And hey, guess what they're doing right now? What? You know what they're promoting? People power. Yeah, dynamic dude. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Johnny Ace is in charge. No, I would say more like rock people's champion. <laughs> no. the, you know, the, the, the cool one. I mean, we got a skateboard. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> we got only one, though. We only could buy one, so we had to, like, you know. <laughs> Budget some tight these days. Yeah. <laughs> well, how this is going to work before we go into it. What oh, we'll thanks, do, I'm just I'm trying to get up to speed on all of this. Well, what we're going to do is we talked about it, and what we're going to do is how one week we're going to do how well do you know your tag team partner. So next I week. I just met the guy. <laughs> <laughs> we're well, it's very you fast. You guys have known each other closely for like five years now. Thanks, well, dude. <laughs> thanks. No, it's not a no, it's no, reality, no. dude. <laughs> it's, it's freaking the truth. But no. It's not I, a flight listen. against you. It's just reality. <laughs> but no, th this is how well do you know your tag team partner in wrestling. 
Like, who's his favorite wrestler? Oh, What's no, his I'm going to be screwed. I don't know anything Stu knows about yeah, wrestling. You better find hey, out. Hey, well, guess what? You, you both got telephones. There's Facebook. That's right. I mean, if you can't There's talk ways to each other, that's it. your own issues. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, no, and then what hey, we'll do. Hey, you can always write each other a letter. <laughs> and, and this was his idea, so I'll let this go with him. But the next pay-per-view, your combined picks. Okay. Okay. So, My, I mean, I'm terrible at picks anyway. Now, well, I've tried now, every type of thing. Might as well let little Stevie now, 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 here, but here's how that's going to work. So, if you and Steven win, then for the next pay-per-view, if we don't do tag teams again, he would still be champion because he's champion unless he gave it to you. Okay, which he would. And for us. I know he would. For us, it, uh, would, it, would, it would be were, me unless I give it to James because I was champion before Steven. But yeah. for the tag team – if we ever did tag teams again, you would still be the tag champ. Right. Dude, you would give me the belt. You tried to give me freaking gonorrhea today. You're going to give me the belt. <laughs> how, many different, how many different diseases is it going to be? I don't know. You've got like 15 <laughs> drugs right there. I don't know what you're trying to cure. Yeah. You've got yeah. a medicine cabinet right I mean, in front of you. And I mean, by the way, can I just make this observation? Like, James wears glasses normally. He has them off, and he's got on his shades, and it is funny watching him try to do that computer. <laughs> Leaning in, he really does look blind because you just watch him over there. That is hilarious. No, I put something there. I can't remember where I put it. Yeah, you the, keep the, leaning the, in the, and having to – and I can know you're hey, squinting behind Stu, those damn Stu, are you trying to say that our tag team names should be the Blonde Boys <laughs> of Alabama? Is that what you're trying to say? Exactly. <laughs> wow. Exactly. I can't believe you call me like that out oh, there, man. man. After I saved your life, you, you call did. me out. I do, appre- I do appreciate it. But no, you still right. put me with – the stupendous one over there. I didn't put you. With, he, he wanted you. He yeah. wanted you. He, <laughs> don't, ba- don't blame ba- anybody but me. Because ba- y'all been so mean to him over the years. <laughs> that he just said, basically, I, I, maybe I'll find love with the new guy. Ba- <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know me yet. Basically, when he came to us with this I'll idea, get to him first. When, I'll show him that I'm cool, and maybe then the others yeah. will figure it out. Well, when he brought this idea to me, I could have swore that I heard underneath his breath of telling me the idea of the taste. He was like, Mm, stupendous. <laughs> I swear I heard it when he was telling what? me about it. It was a, mm, it's it a little bit of those French, French fried taters. <laughs> mm, stupendous. Mm, that's a big one. Uh, you know, like, yeah. mm-hmm. Guys are blame. <laughs> hey, uh, so, some people call it a bandana. We call it a t-shirt sleeve. <laughs> All right, we oh. we're gonna take a quick break. Come he right can't back. see anything. No, I can't. Well, he's got to take his glasses. <laughs> no, I can see. I'm just taking – I got to go get something. We spent, I left him contact we, lenses. We spent, we, spent, we spent like a whole segment – on how Steven tried to infect <laughs> Stu. Like this, like, this is a real-life version of Resident Evil, the Umbrella Corporation. Single white too. female is what right. I'm thinking it is. <laughs> s- s- single white stupendous. Yeah. All right, we're going to take a break. We'll be right back. You're listening to Wrestling with Attitude. I know I'm 
sexy. This is the Melting Pot, a.k.a. Six Month Champ. And you're listening to Wrestling With Attitude. Don't forget, you can find every show on WrestlingWithAttitude.com. Don't forget to like us on Facebook at Wrestling With Attitude. And don't forget to tweet us on Twitter at WWA Show. All right, welcome back to Wrestling With Attitude. Y'all ready for this? A lot of attitude in that first segment. It was. I mean, a lot of different things in that first segment. The bandanas you know? are uh, ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the bandanas. Yeah. I would have five of you, but I don't think there's enough uh, hand sanitizer in here. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, fist bump. That's as close as you get. Okay. <laughs> That's as close as it gets. So, anyway, we were talking about, before we went to break, we were talking about the tag teams. You guys, the bandanas. Okay, yeah, that's great. The banditos. The banditos. No. <laughs> uh, you ready for this? I think yes. I am. All right. All right. So, so go ahead. Know. All right. Well, I'm going to start the music. You can, like, pull out chairs you and start beating me over the head. Yeah, hey, <laughs> you know what? Everybody needs a good friend. So, what I had to do was go out and find a best friend because the enemy of my enemies is my friend. Oh, they. they so. Oh, oh that, how cute. They brought t shirts. Oh, they brought T-shirts. There so, you go. so what I did t-shirts. was I went and got my enemy because he's your enemy, and now he's my friend. That's right. <laughs> because when you combine two world champions, this is what see, you See, here's the deal. What you see before you, we're not tag team champions. We're a team of world champions. We win. We win. Somebody's <laughs> crazy. <laughs> Don't be jealous. Are we having like a smack talk off right now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we we really don't care. We don't care. We got well, freaking well, first, bandana. Well, okay. First off, you're behind the smack talking curve yeah. because you're stuck yeah. with him. Well, you don't smack have talk. smack talking. I mean, you're that. handicapped in that department. I will give you that one, sir. Yeah, I would. I could throw James through a window. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> you can try. You can try. <laughs> sir. Don't worry. I couldn't see I, it. I don't, <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't see it coming. Trust me. I mean, hey, listen, listen. You're handicapped with this guy. I've got Stevie Wonder over here, okay? I mean, it's all good. I mean. What are you talking about? Greatest man to ever live. I know. Oh, Ray go Charles. ahead. Go ahead. Shake your head, sir. Oh, I'm good. The, I'm dirty, the dirty Hills. Yep. Yeah, the Dirty that's Hills. Our, that's, that's our tag, tag team, team name. name. Uh, now, that, that's something that's had happened in the past, I take it. You didn't have those oh, shirts. It's actually, no, it's you, happening right now. Right. Oh, you, you had those shirts just made? Right. Yeah. yeah. You can, like, like yeah, I couldn't go buy one of those shirts. You could, but yeah. you won't fit in it. <laughs> I won't fit in it. Yeah. What do you have, like, mediums over there or something? <laughs> Smediums? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <clears throat> but, yes, right now they're currently – they will be tag team champions yes. this weekend. Oh, they're a real tag team. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can see me and Steven are really behind the eight <laughs> <laughs> He can't smack talk, and I don't know shit about wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. The schmucks. The guy, I don't know. Oh, the man. The schmuck Yeah, we're in trouble, buddy. <laughs> It's going to be a long yeah. trip, trip, Steven. Thanks, Stu. Hey, man, you picked me, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, t- I'll tell you, man, Stu, Stu is like Archie Manning right now, and he gets drafted by the New Orleans Saints in like the yep. 70s, okay? It's over. It's Thanks. over. Yeah, yeah. Don't think me, dude. You, it's over. No, he's like, he's like Brett Favre when he got drafted to the Jets, or when he went to the Jets and everything. He's like, oh, I'm going to make this team better. Nope. Not going to make it better hey, at all. Hey, hey, That's what he's hey, doing. Hey, hey, the, the one thing I will say is, like, what? before Far went there, they, like, made an AFC championship game. That's Just true. to let you know, they weren't that terrible. And what did we tell you about bringing sports metaphors? <laughs> 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 we Never told do you it. not to do that. Hey, Never hey, do hey, it. Hey, well. by, by the way, Stu, you are allowed to hit your own partner in this type of match, okay? <laughs> oh, so yeah. get you sick. The I will get ahead. you sick if you do it. I'm coming correct with the <laughs> instant hand <laughs> You should. Hey, hey, it's like the dog with the spray bottle. You spray with the sanitizer. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah, that's your name today, Germ. Germ? <laughs> germ. That should be your little, little, The Germ. Little Germy. The Germ. The Germinator. Oh, the Germinator. <laughs> been si- I've been stupendous si- Germinator. Si- I've been sent si- back in time to infect <laughs> the stupendous. <laughs> <laughs> come, come with me. me. Come with me if you want to cough. <laughs> I know, because we're in sync, man. We're in sync, dude. You knew this. That's why you picked me. That yep. is you knew great. like we connect on so many levels. Yeah. I just, that C- is great. You have a girlfriend, right? Nope. Oh, no. Are you serious? <laughs> Go on. 
<laughs> Who are you talking hey, to? But over guess what? If I, he, <laughs> guess what? If he did, he'd probably share with you because <laughs> you're his partner. <laughs> Oh. Hey, and you know what song he put on when you walk in? Tag team back again. Check in the record and let's begin. Oh. Uh, hey, I don't even know if I want to talk about Raw after this. This is great. <laughs> I was going to say, man, it's all uh, downhill from here. You know what? what? You know what? what? I can see. I can see the breakup. Of the banditos right now. <laughs> the banditos. Stu's girlfriend falls in love with Stu Pen- Stu's girlfriend falls in love with Stu Pen- <laughs> oh, I thought you just said <laughs> Stu's so, girlfriend so, falls in so, love with Stu because no, that makes so, sense. So, so it would be the ultimate breakup of like the woman manager picks one guy, then the team breaks up. Yeah, I see this already. Well, it's been fun, guys. I guess I'm getting <laughs> booted off the island. <laughs> well, before we go too much for it, let's go into – let's actually go into wrestling. Uh, oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, you've been everywhere else here. We're going to do our top five this week. And, oh, yeah. yeah. WWA Sound Off, where your voice can be heard. Sound Off, better know how you feel, because the anger inside is real. Sound off. All right, this week's top five. Oh, this is going to be fun. Top five mullets. Of all time. Oh, you saved it. I did. I saved it for us. <laughs> I was we thinking did? about it. I was going to question. I was going to ask you guys. Hey, who had the best mullet? <laughs> so not now. I thought, like, I thought you'd already got it. <laughs> no, got no, really no, 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 no. We was, no. we were saving it for you. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. So listen, who who made a list? I made a list. You got two people on your list. I've I made, got I made a list. five. I made a you. list. I'll go first. Do you want to go first? Yeah. All right. And in, in in no certain order, okay. Oh, mine's in order. Um. No, number five, I'm going to go with Tatanka. <laughs> Straight up, playing it. He was an Indian, but had a mullet. Okay? He was an Indian, <laughs> but had a mullet. And that's all I'm going to say. I don't know any I mean, Indians that had right, mullets. I mean, Indians usually let all their hair grow out, even the size. But for some reason, he didn't. So I'm going to go with Tatanka on that. Yeah, yeah. that's Tatanka. <laughs> Pretty oh bad. Oh, my God. Uh, next on my list, I'm going to go with Crush. That, that dude's yeah. mullet was, was pretty epic, man. Was he in and demolition? He was, yes. Crush was in demolition. <laughs> yeah, he um, had one of the best mullets ever. Um, number, Down the side. Number three, I'm going to go with Brian Sags from the Nasty Boys. Or Brian, was it? No, no. no. That was my number one. That was, Brian, Brian, that Brian, not, Brian, boy, he's only my number three. But he's my number three because – by the way, if you if you if you ever watch the show Hogan Knows Best, yep. they're friends. They are right. friends. But he is still sporting the mullet that he wore <laughs> yeah. like two days. So no, it's, it's, it's perfect. I love like, it. Yeah. Same thing. Um number two on my list, Barry Horowitz. Oh, oh man. Because not only were you a terrible wrestler, but God your mullet was God. I mean I mean by way of mullets it was good, but it was it was god awful. And uh, my my number one mullet of all time that is probably my absolute favorite, uh, <laughs> as bad as it kills me to say it, Shawn Michaels sported a pretty sweet mullet when he first started out, man. When he first went, especially singles action, that mullet was large and in charge. Yeah. <laughs> with a sexy boy. I mean, I didn't know many people who could come out Ooh. to the tune of sexy boy with a mullet. Didn't really know, but Shawn Michaels somehow poured it off. So Shawn would be my number one because he's kind of my favorite he wrestler. He had bangs so. too. Yeah, that one time. And, yeah. and see that to yeah, me, they, that's yeah. what set it over the top was he kept the bangs with it. Like most people, like crushing them, cut the top up like almost in a high top with oh, a yeah. fade. It's business in the front. No, no, yeah, he put yeah all yeah. Out, all out in the front. So that's why I go with Shawn. Mullet's like an El Camino. Yeah, you know, you can put a camper on it. You can take the camper off. Party in the back yeah. of that bad boy. Yeah. So, Sean's my number one ball. All right. Go ahead. Okay. Um, <laughs> I mean, my first one's going to be uh, Diesel. Like, when he first came out, he kind of had that mullet. Like, when he came out with Sean as his bodyguard, if you remember that. Yeah. He, um, didn't he have one as Vinny Vegas, too? He did. I mean, it's always been like that. Yeah, but I mean, I don't know if I count that as a mullet, though. <laughs> but well, the sure Vinny, guy. No, but the Vinny. Like somebody Vegas, else brought no, it no, up. No, 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 but I'm saying the Vinny Vegas one, though, was exactly a mullet. That's all I remember. It was like, wow, that's a mullet. Um, the other one is Brian, uh, Brian Nobbs. I mean, come on. Well, here's the Vinny Vegas kind of. Yeah, I but mean, he let it grow out at one time. Right. It looked like a mullet. Except we can't find video or a picture to <laughs> yeah. back up that claim. <laughs> 
God, Stu, you're like the now, greatest tag team. Player now, ever. if you want to go back to his oh, older God. character, God. yes, that was one yeah. he had. There we go. Here's a mullet. Brian Knobs would be number four. Um, Got to go with uh, the Rude Awakening. Got to go with his mullet. No, it's called a perm mullet. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. We have to get that right. It's a perm mullet, if you remember his. And uh, then um, Ricky Morton oh. from the Rock and Roll Express. Yeah, got mine. Yeah. Ricky, <laughs> one of my guys. But this is just because I remember seeing him two years ago. He's still, He's still rocking got this. No, that's him right He's now. He's still I mean, rocking you know, this still bullet. <laughs> they, he ain't going to change it. No, he's not. And uh, it's better than Robert. So Robert has no hair up top, and he's got mullet yeah. in the back. And last one, Johnny Ace. I'm sorry, but Johnny Ace had like the little porcupine calic in the in the front of it with the mullet in the back. It looked horrible, but it was great at the same time. Right. <laughs> yeah. Th- yeah. This is what you were named after, by the way. Yeah, that's the dynamic okay, that's dudes. That's dynamic dudes. <laughs> I mean, that's what you tag team is named after. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I just found another good mullet. <laughs> oh, no, I found the best one. When did I get to it? Uh, all right, so that's all your mullet? Yeah. So. Okay, well, don't have my list. Thought you'd already done it, so I've forgotten most of them. But I did have uh, Ricky Morton, and I did have uh, Brian Nobbs. They were both on the list. <laughs> uh, I was really sure Brian Nobbs would go unknown, and you, know, you guys wouldn't. Animal, at one time, even though he had the mohawk, he grew out that little bit in the back. <laughs> Yeah. Um, Animal had had a, had a very unconventional mullet, um, and it was it was like, what are you doing, man? I mean, you look like a total badass, and then you turn around. Was it yeah. a curly at one point? Yeah. Like where the, the I, hair was curly? No, and I mean, it was always pretty much that 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 uh, mohawk. But then he just he had that little flare yeah. that kind of flipped. <laughs> always kind of like the Jackie. O. I always thought it was like a rat tail. Remember yeah. when you were yeah. growing up, it yeah. looked like a rat tail. Yeah. yeah. So uh, Animal. God. Um, you know, and mine's really going to be more of a fantastic for Mount Rushmore. Magnum TA is on mine. Magnum TA, really, that, you know, and, 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 and it was more kind of the long hair, but he did kind of keep it close on the sides. <laughs> so that's why when it yeah. flared out in the back, that's why it's mullet-esque. Um, but that would be my, my four. I was really hoping I could drop Brian Dobbs because that was my, he's really my number one. I like him right. a lot. <laughs> All right, cool. Yeah, thanks, man. Uh, <laughs> Number five for me is Mike Austin, ECW. Always had the mullet in the back. Just, yeah. You know, that one was pretty bad. Uh, number four for me, well, actually, Tatanka was five. Awesome was four. Uh, number three for me is the original Undertaker. You forget when the yeah. Undertaker started. <laughs> when his hair was red. <laughs> oh, yeah, he had a mullet to no end, son. It was Pretty bad. Yeah. I mean, oh, that look at bad. the mullet. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's a bad mullet. <laughs> that, is, that is really bad. Is that when he was with Paul Bearer? Yep. Yeah. When, no, that's when he – yeah, he did have it with Paul Bearer, but he also had it when he was with uh, Brother Love and Ted DBS. Side, sidebar before you keep on your list. This is kind of off the mullet Good. train. It's more with Paul Bearer. Uh, what was his little shtick, his little sideshow on the USA WWF – Sunday afternoon thing. You remember they had like a – The uh, funeral parlor. The funeral parlor. Thank you. I could not remember that to save my life. He'd sit there with his little urn and – Oh, my undertaker. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Number – yeah. That's got to be number one. <laughs> no, no, no. This isn't even my number one. Just wait. This is my James, number two. James went above and beyond. He really – I, I found the ultimate mullet, and it's not even number one. This has got to be. Come this on. is Barry Hardy. Holy 1993 WWF. <laughs> Much more. Right. Barry, Barry Hardy. Hardy with now, tell back. me that is not a mullet, Oh, GP. my God. <laughs> that is a mullet. Yeah, that's awesome, dude. It's like a Dolph Ziggler mullet kind of thing. He's got two different hair colors there. Look but at that. He. This <laughs> is true. I remember when he was wrestling back there. Jobber, but this is what his hairdo was. The goatee just does it for me. <laughs> oh, yeah, the goatee. Go- he's putting the goatee with a bullet. Like, yep, I'm a truck driver. <laughs> like, what are you, dude? Yeah, <laughs> and it was like almost like he dyed the sides, but that's his real hair color, so he dyed the top and, like, the bottom. That's yes. why it makes no sense to me. Now, God. number one, it, it goes to – this is the greatest one ever. Cody Diener, TNA. Is it because he's wearing the cutoff <laughs> jorts? Yeah. Yeah, like that's what I With think. With the Marlboro on his hands. And the sunglasses. 
Wyams, I mean, uh, the village people would be proud to have him in. Yes, there, yes, they would. Yeah. <laughs> and, and he did. I remember him because he was with uh, ODB. I got a couple a that I, yeah. I'm not sure of that I'd like rulings on if we could. Okay. That I can't really remember uh, fully. Diamond Dallas Page, mullet or no mullet? Mullet. Mullet. Diamond Dallas Page was curly, permy yeah. mullet. Yeah. It was mullet. You'll go mullet. Yeah. All right. Um, and the other one that I had, um, yeah, you can't, yeah, that's see, definitely a mullet, no. dude. Yeah. Right there. That's Psycho mullet. Sid. Mullet? Would you say that was? Uh, like, no. Like, like when he, at no, one but, time, no, no. At one time it was, but not all the time. Yeah, when he grew his hair out. Yeah. And then the other one, um, Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Yeah. Yes. We're huh. counting that as I'm, mullet? You know what? Yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm going to give you another one. Can you show uh, me a picture of Hacksaw real quick? Yeah, because I'm. Mullet. Uh, I'll, I'll give you another one, too. Bobby Eaton. Oh, yeah. that is strong, JB. That's that is a really, really, really strong one. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, I no, saw more like mullet. had long hair, though. That's I mean, a mullet. Yeah. Here, but Bobby Eaton is definitely. Bobby well, here's Eaton. some other ones besides Bobby Eaton. Uh, Lance Storm. He had the ECW rat yep. uh, back in the day. Holy Paul, shit, James. You, you made a list of like 49 I mullets. Did. I did. <laughs> uh, some other ones is uh, you. we had Hulk Hogan, 84. He had the mullet. Uh-huh. Paulie dangerously yep. back in the early days. Stevie Richards in ECW. Uh, 1991 Steve Austin. Don't forget Bob Sparky Plug Holly. Yeah. Had a huge one. Bob Holly. Uh, let me throw another one out there for you on your list. No, he, he probably is. Eddie Guerrero. No, he's on there. Oh, my God. He, the Mexican oh, mullet. Yes, the that should have been his That was blown. the best one, too, in my opinion. Uh, Razor Ramon. Uh, the one, two, three kid, Sean Walton. Hey, when yo. he was one, two, three kid, he had one. Did uh, what's his, um, Bruce the barber listen, beefcake? If, if we and if, the rockers, don't forget the rockers. Yeah, I want to talk about since we're talking about mullets. I want to talk about mullets in sports. Period. <laughs> and I just want to say Dwayne that, Jensen that Stu's favorite college team at one time had a quarterback. With a mullet, man. Oh, Tanny Hill. Steve Tanny Hill. Oh, that played yeah. for the South Carolina Gamecocks. You could yes. buy it. Yes. You could, that buy, is it. You could so, buy the hair and attach it to your <laughs> hat. Hey, James. Yes. He was, it was, awesome. it was yeah. strong. Yeah. yeah, it was strong. What about Chris Benoit? The mullet, yeah. He yeah. had one. He had, he had one, a right? small one, yeah. Because when he was with, like, the horsemen and all that, they – he was like one of the only ones. And that how do you him. think they did this? It's like, uh, yeah, I want to change my look up. I don't think I'm badass <laughs> enough. How about you uh, just shave the sides and keep it long in the back? Is that what they did? I mean, <laughs> probably. You know. So we had the hockey haircut. Yeah. <laughs> on our website, I'm Canadian. <laughs> on our website, we had the polls. On our website, we had one vote for Cody Deaner, uh, one for Bob Sparky Plug Holly. Thank you, uh, Scott. And the Rockers, we had two. You know how you should say that next time? 25% for one, 25% for the other, and 50. That way they don't know we only have four people voting on our party. <laughs> they don't know we have more. I mean, we got one for Sid Vicious. Well, there you go. There's uh, 10%, you know? Yeah, it's like, <laughs> it just makes the numbers sound better. Well, thank you. Eight people. I appreciate it. Thanks, that. Mom, thank for voting three times. <laughs> Which she did. I can't believe Ricky Morton didn't come vote for himself. Oh, Ricky Morton. Yeah, because he like, lives I mean, right down I mean, the street. I mean, he's trying to get himself in the Hall of Fame, so, I mean. <laughs> no, I, they, I, they were my favorite tag team when I was, like, five. Yeah. No, <laughs> they, they really were. were. Yep. And then the Road Warriors came along, and I said, oh, those guys. Oh, suck. much cooler. What? A, um, oh, wait, no, he already said it. I was just saying Ricky Morton, but – or not Rick, um Robert Gibson? No, no, not Ricky Morton. Um, guy from uh, Rockers. Marty Jannetty. Marty, Marty, Marty Jannetty. He had a mullet, too. He did. Well, that's why yeah. he said the Rockers. I said the Rockers oh, together. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because I forgot. He he see, to Shawn, Ma- Shawn Michaels to me didn't – when he came to WWE, I didn't really count that as a mullet, though. You know? It was a mullet. Like, I, I guess it's just because he had the longer hair of the two. He didn't look like a mullet to me. But can, can I don't know I what my okay, classification hold, of hold a mullet is. When he came to so. WWE, how, when he came to WWE or WWF at the time, how old were you? Yeah, thanks, James. No, what, were you <laughs> born yet? Nope. Then how do you say when he came to WWE? Because you don't I remember. watched things about it, okay? He watched things about it, okay? Yeah. Thanks for backing me up, Steve. <laughs> I'm trying not to do that. <laughs> I was backed in the corner on that one. He kind of hey, has to, Bandana. Hey, you, you know why he's taking that for you? Why? He said, that's my partner. That's my tag team partner. That's right. You see, you should talk about me, it. JP, and I, we don't yeah. make stupid comments. We don't have to do he that. He doesn't get the reference, though. No. 
He doesn't. No. Terrell Owens for Tony Romo. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. Okay. I know we don't talk about that on this show. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Says the Cowboys fan, I got that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, Way to pick that up, buddy. I'm, I'm glad you picked that up. You know, now we did mullets. Uh, you know, I'm trying to debate what's our next top five we do. I want to say hairstyles because we're in that ballpark right now. <laughs> what? There was really good hairstyles in the WWE. You want to do best hairstyles no. in WWE? Actually, I was thinking about taking a page from WCW here, and because it's We're around the Great American, play. it's around the Great American Bash time when. Uh, How about the best footwear? Ooh, we can do ah, footwear, boots, uh, shoes, all kinds of footwear, man. All right, we can do the shoes. big footwear. yellow boots of Hulk Hogan are iconic. Uh, Ric Flair's monogrammed. Do, you were cool do, in the NWA if you had monogram boots. Yeah, because Double A had them too. Yeah, or the Some Double A nah, boots. No, nah, 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 I gotta ask. <laughs> Terry Taylor had them. Are you trying to tell us something? That I have a foot fetish? Yeah. <laughs> Only on Saturdays. <laughs> so, ladies, keep that in mind. If it's Sunday, don't bring that crap to stupid no, ass. No. He Saturday. don't want it. He doesn't have any of that. So, tune in on Saturdays for stupid. I'll be at the dirt track. <laughs> for your foot fetish. All right. Only on stupendous. <laughs> so, next week, we'll do top five footwear of all time. There we go. I, I, I can say. I can, <laughs> this guy's weirding me out over here. Okay, can I just listen, say that? I can see. I can see. I can see. Stu, I can see Stuart the dirt track, and so chick walks by like mm-hmm. in a pair of sandals or flip flops. She's like, mm-hmm. <laughs> "You got some French fried taters? Come on, over here. Mm-hmm. Look, uh, look, look I like how your second toe is longer than your big toe. <laughs> mm-hmm. That pinky uh, toe curls right you know, under nice. Like. You, know, you know how I know she's classy. Mm, she just had a pedicure. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, that that's just awesome. <laughs> that that's great. I'm glad. Yeah, I'm I'm glad I'm learning stuff about his tag team partner. That's right. I mean, yeah. I mean, I've sucked toes in my in my past, guys. I'm I'm not proud of it, but I've done it. He's proud. Okay. Of it. I mean, we've all done things we're not proud of. Let's be honest. <sighs> Actually, well, I, actually, actually, at the time, I really got down on it. So I mean, it I, I, actually, good. Steve is probably young enough. He hasn't done a whole lot yet, so he probably doesn't have to worry about that <laughs> nope, right now. not at all. Haven't done anything I regret yet, except keep, the show. Keep, hey, keep, hanging out, <laughs> keep hanging out with your tag team partner. Yeah. <laughs> You'll have enough. You'll have enough. Two. <laughs> That's cool. I mean, Stu's a cool guy. The, yeah. way, the way you like to share. <laughs> <laughs> oh, little Steve. Right, you, you try to get your tag team partner sick once and it goes all to hell. Well, now that you got everybody <laughs> dirty. Yeah. Next. Oh. Next. Yeah. Do not sing to me. Stop singing to me. What if Damn it. I knew he was going to do that. He looked at me and started doing the what if playing the piano. I love how you call me out this week hey. on it. I've been doing it like hey. Well, I didn't minutes. know you were going to draft me and then try to infect me all no. in the same and week. And sing to you. And then you look at me and go. But he's over here. He's over here like, you know don't, don't look at me. Don't look at me. You know what this reminds me of? This, this reminds me. Of Chuck and Billy, but, <laughs> but, but, but Billy has figured out what Chuck's doing. And he don't like it. I, I'm telling you, I'm gonna make an he intro. For like you. It, man. I'm gonna make your theme song for you two will be Chuck no. and Billy. No, yeah. we ain't you doing that. No, I'm gonna play it. So no. Yeah, yeah, that's what you two <laughs> are gonna do. He didn't even finish it. Yeah, <laughs> I tell you what, I don't mind when you sing along to the What If. Just don't look at me when you do it. All right, fine. Don't gaze fine, at me. Don't gaze I'm at me. Be over here next time, okay? Be over here. I mean, you can just do hey, it in the air. Do the don't. Stevie Wonder. You don't have to hey. look at anybody, but you do kind of like. I need a glass, un- baby. Unblinkingly look at me. <laughs> and I wasn't I'm just looking like, at hey, you. I don't. Don't, don't, hey, don't, don't gaze. Over you. Don't hey, don't gaze my tag team partner. Oh, Come it won't on. matter. What's wrong it with has you? no effect on me. I know, I know. I ain't worried about it. My goodness, this is I mean, he's the ick factor. It doesn't matter. All right, so what? Yeah, I mean, you, guys, can you? We heard the show I'm up. It's gr- starting I'm to get dark outside. I don't want my tag team partner going to the table. I'm scared of <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so well, what you is hear, the Did you hear that thunder? <laughs> oh, oh. Hey, hey, it was right there. Okay, I'll just have flash of lightning count, and that's how many miles the thunder <laughs> is away from us. Yeah, 
<laughs> the storm's five miles away. Oh, it's right on top man. of us. That's pretty close. Well, this week, the dirty what if is what if the click became a stable and there was no MSG incident and no one left? Oh, I know who the click is. You know who the click is? Yeah, that's Shawn Michaels in the gang. The gang. Shawn Michaels and who else? And Hunter Hearst Helmsley, mm-hmm. aka Triple H, Razor. Oh, and Kevin Nash. And and you can tell me the uh, the other one. X what? X Pac. One, two, three, kid. Yeah, yeah. That's the click. Shawn so something. What would Shawn have Walker. happened if the click did not have? If they became a stable and stayed WWF? This is a big one because. If you know, if Triple H stays within the click, Triple H was actually, you know, like the fourth guy in the click because Sean Nash and Hall were all three made. I mean, Triple H was kind of that next guy, but he wasn't really made yet in the click. Like I said, he was kind of the their friend that they were bringing along. So, I mean, even for his sake of his career, what would have happened? Would he would he ever really took off like he did? Now, answer me this, Batman. The click at the time when you just named the five guys, Kevin Nash and Scott Hall, were they Kevin Nash and Scott Hall or were they still Diesel no, and Razor Ramon? That, Diesel and Razor that is a big thing right, right there. Two things that I'll say about the click. If the click stays together, WCW doesn't compete with the WWF nope. Nope. because that street cred and that edge of NWO doesn't work with Hogan because Hogan, in the beginning, if you remember when he tried to do his promos and everything, he was still, as Hollywood Hogan, doing his, and Kevin Nash and Scott Howard like, dude. You just got to be cool. Like Tony and down. Just, and just, mm-hmm. and we are the baddest MFers in the house. Correct. So we'll just walk out. It's like the bulls. The daddy bull and the son are on the mountaintop. And he's like, the, the baby bull's like, hey, dad, hey, dad, let's run down there and, and, and have sex with one of those cows. And the daddy bull says, no, son, let's walk down there and have sex with all of them. It'd be better if I could cuss, but it's, yeah. it's one of those things well, where you walk. I've never you, heard this story before in my you, life. You, 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 you walk down there and you, and you just own the situation. Secondly, it, the click, I don't know if it would have taken off because of the gimmick of Razor Ramon and yeah. Diesel. It would have been if they could have parlayed those characters into the Kevin Nash, yeah. Scott Hall persona. No, yeah. It would have been the best of both worlds. Well, I mean, that's a fact, though. NWO probably would have never happened. If it did, no. it would have never it, – it wouldn't have been what it no, was. No, WCW would not have competed with WWE. Because mm, you know what WCW would have had to do? They would have had to try to reincarnate the Horsemen for like the seventh time, and right. they yeah. screwed it up. Which they did over – Right, and, and they again. screwed it up. Well – well, they beat the NWO into the ground. I mean, you had the Mexican NWO, you yeah. had the red NWO, <laughs> yeah. you had the black NWO. I mean, it was you had you had all these different things, and eventually ran that into the mm-hmm. ground too. But when the NWO came out, it's one of the greatest factions. It's right up there with the Horsemen. Well, it's, it's right one up of the there. Top, it's one of the it, top, because because I'll say this from my end. When I go top three factions, I'm going in any which order you want to put them, but I'm going DX, Four Horsemen, and NWO. And to me, that's where the list stops. Right. Everybody else is taking a back seat. I'm right. sorry. Right. Because nobody affected wrestling at some point in time the way that those three factions It was did. huge. I mean, because this way, WCW was put up and beating head-to-head yes. Raw. And you got to remember – Look who was heading those two groups and knew everything that was going on in WWE because one of them pretty much when they left was the world champion and the other was the intercontinental champion, which were the two biggest belts in that company at the time. Now, James, would you – I want to ask you this question, though. Would you have seen Sting as the black and white Sting if this never happened? Let let me go back to that and I'll answer that. Okay. First of all, since I didn't get to comment on it yet, they, they brought the edge to wrestling. Mm-hmm. Okay, so if we w- would we've ever been out of the PG era, I don't think so. I, I think we would stay gimmicky for m- many more years because th- th- we were very gimmicky before they left. When they went NWO, WCW, that's when we brought that edge, and then DX was born. Everything else was born. Stone Cold. Stone Cold. That's what pushed it. So – now, so to answer your question, no, I don't think Sting black and white would ever happen if it wasn't for NWO. There wouldn't have been no grounds for there him because they would have still pushed him as the goody goody guy. Yeah. I mean, because do I think Eric Bischoff would got the company? Well, I mean, he was you know president. I don't think he would ever push the envelope if 
you know, they they didn't get triple uh, – Sean – not Sean Michael. Scott Hall and Kevin Nash. I don't think they were ever pushed it. Yeah. So, I, I – I'll put it this way. NWO pushed a lot of things into wrestling. I'll put it this way, though. Wrestling. I believe that if they stay in WWE, WWE at some point, at some point I still believe – it would have come out who they were. I agree. Because Triple H is shot at them doing the click. They were already trying to do things like the Madison Square Garden incident behind Vince's back. Like, they were already pushing Vince to do stuff that other people weren't. So, I, I'm just saying, now, would it have taken longer? Yes, because what they were doing was working. But I still believe at some point – Though it would have come out of those guys because they were already trying to kind of get into it. You see, but the thing with that, I think Triple H would have been buried. I, I right. don't think he would, he would be have been where, man out. I don't think he would be a, as great a champion as he's been because of the other guys there. The only thing that because Diesel and, and Scott Razor Ramon would right. would have had many more titles. The fights. only thing that would have pushed Triple H to where he is now, if they stayed in that company he would have almost had to turn his back on his friends. Yeah, no. I, and, then, and, then, and then he would have had to get, go get someone like Steve Austin or The Rock to be in his corner and fight. I'm just saying, he would have had to like do something yeah. totally different on his and own. Look, no, with I mean, Triple H, there, there's no denying his ability. I mean, he, yeah. he is what he is. He, right. he's, he's great on the mic. He's got the physique. He's got the talent in the ring. Now, would it have happened on the timeline? Of course not. And, of course, his timeline got reset because of that situation. Yeah. And he got put in the doghouse. But, no, it would have done like JP said. It would have been the way you push him after you get Razor Ramon and Diesel to turn into Kevin Hall and Scott Nash. I got those right, right? <laughs> no. no, you Scott, got Scott Hall and Kevin Nash. <laughs> you would have him – Turn on those guys, and that would have been his push right. to then mm -hmm. catapult. So it would have been but fantastic. It would have but, though, but you got it would have been fantastic you, for WWF because you would not have had to worry about the WCW because they never would have been a player. But yeah. Triple H really broke out of his shell when Shawn Michaels after WrestleMania 14 was hurt. That's and he even tells you that that promo right. he did because it was all on him and he didn't have to depend on anybody else. And that's what I would worry about. You know, if Sean was there or or Scott Hall or Kevin Nash was there. And honestly, I don't know if Stone Cold would have been pushed because you would have had Razor, you would have had Diesel, well, you would have had your main guys. And but, who I, I just think they it's a domino effect. But I think it goes back to what me and Stuart said. We kind of agree with you. Triple H would have eventually been fed up with playing third fiddle to those guys would have said, hey, right. let me try this. And Vince eventually would have probably let him do it or let him try it. And now whether it would have worked or not, who knows with those guys being the stars. But I still think Triple H would have done it because you got to remember, that was a guy who was under contract from WCW. People forget this. Before the whole Monday Night Wars thing started, he jumped ship from WCW to WWE on a whim that WWE wanted to offer him a contract. Yep. And for like double the work for like the same amount of money. But yep. one thing these guys all have going for them, it, it, it was when they stripped it down and they got away from the gimmicks, like yeah. you said. The talent was going to rise no matter what. The Rock, he had to go through all those personas. And when they finally said, hey, just be your flamboyant, like, cool self instead of Listen, being gimmicky, you, Rocky Maivia. Stone Cold, same way. Well, you, these guys had that it factor. Now, when would it have happened? I'm not sure. Would it have happened the same way? Don't know. But it's still, these guys were going to be superstars because they just had Basically, that I want to watch right. him. I've got you you've have, got the it factor. When you have it, yes. And they, and they all have that. They all have the that. The it factor of wrestling with attitude. That's right. Yeah. See, he's on my team. You could chalk that up. I'm the it factor, the six-month champ. Yeah. yeah. We got bandanas. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm the greatest man to ever live. Doesn't matter. We I got mean, bandanas. bandanas. Just saying. Hey, man, put the sunglasses three, on. We'll see how great yeah. you are. I'll give you three facts that we got Blind bandanas, bandanas, and bandanas. Wow. Three facts right there. Oh, Jesus. And he's the mic man. But, but yes, yeah, sad. But, but you only have two bandanas. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know where you got three. Don't from. mock the bandanas. <laughs> tell, where you get tell the them, we can always make another one. Yeah, brother. we can always we make can another one. We can always make another one. <laughs> By the way, what everybody does, Stu is holding an extra shirt right now where he could have cut the sleeve. He's thinking, he's he's really thinking. He's got about the scissors it. in the other hand. 
<laughs> I mean, they were pretty cool looking. Yeah. Uh, I think that was sarcasm. This is pretty little, thick. Yeah, I mean, well, you know, those uh, shirts are pretty cool. I mean, yeah. uh, you yeah. should. Yeah. They are I'm pretty good cool. Good one, buddy. Hey, don't touch me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you want it? You want it? <laughs> you want it? <laughs> How bad do you want it? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, we can do this. But moving okay. on from Dirty Wales, we'll go into this week in wrestling. Uh, this week, they had, let me see, where we're going to go first. Uh, TNA held Slammiversary, which is this weekend. I know you can't wait to see it. Yeah. I can't yeah, even watch it, man. Uh, yeah, Jeff I mean, Derrick I... beat Christian for the TNA title. What? Can I ask you, what is Slammiversary? It's their big event each year. It's their it's WrestleMania. Their WrestleMania. Oh. Now, this year, I, I wanted to ask you why you're here. They got EC3 versus Kurt Angle. Why every single year do they put a new guy in the main event for the world title? Because that's all they got. Well, don't, what we talk about before, though, when you no, – that's not all they got. They got two great champions. Yeah, you but, know, but they're in a the tie team, but, so you can't – And that's the problem with them, though. Every year they put this one rookie guy, this new guy, mm-hmm. they put as a heavyweight champion. Every because, year. Because they're – It doesn't change. They're trying to find a Stone Cold – they're trying to find a Triple H, and they haven't. They got – The one or two guys they did, they let go from the company. Yeah. Because you had AJ Styles, who could have been your champion for 10 freaking years, and nobody in that company would have cared because the fans loved him. But you didn't do it. And you let him air it publicly on TV how – and I guess – I don't know if it was a work or not, but he pretty much let it be known that he did not like working for Dixie Carter the minute she took over that company. I mean, everybody thought Jeff Jarrett was bad. Well, I can't tell that none of those guys left the company or got fired while Jeff Jarrett was in charge, whether he was champion or not. I can't tell they weren't happy. So that's the issue you're having. But, again, they're trying to look for that one young guy to build the company on, and they can't find him. And that's why they keep doing it. I just – I don't get it. Yeah, I Listen, mean, I stay I with your – stay with the guys that have, like, Kurt Angle, Bobby right. Roode. All scenarios. Those this, guys pushing him as multiple time champions. This is the only thing I need to know about your company in TNA. You have a guy, Al Snow, who WWE fired from training people and tried to help write to basically be one of your head writers and one of your head trainers. And let's be honest, WWE just doesn't fire people out of the blue if you're good at your job. That's true. That's true. I mean, let's be honest. When people leave that company, even head writers were like, what? He's been there like 10 years. So they're using not a company that just replaces people every year. Yeah. And that's the issue with TNA. Oh, you got fired from that? Well, come join our organization. Tell me how that's a good move. That's like trading two players, two bench players, but then you trade it for three bench players. They're still bench players. Yep. That's not an upgrade. All right. Well, there you go. I wanted to see what you said. Bottom uh, lines, you didn't. He? Yeah, he did. <laughs> uh, back in 1994, because WWF- the it factor said so. Oh, yeah. Back in 1994, WWF held King of the Ring tournament in Baltimore, Maryland, and Orrin Hart won the tournament. In by what year? Tentaka, 1994. 19 what? 94. Oh, okay. Four. I kept thinking you were saying 84, dude. I was I like, said dude. 94. Enough you, you, you is kind of enough. Said, you kind of said, no, no, no. And it's time for a change. That's right. Was it that, that whole deal? Yep. When he went through that deal? Yep. Uh, that was pre Nation of Domination. That was it? pre. Okay. Then 1996, if you remember, Scott Hall and Kevin Nash at the Great American Bash in Baltimore, 1996. 1996, Stu. No, I got it that time. Okay. They attacked, Your enunciation was much better. Sorry. They attacked <laughs> Eric Bischoff and powerbombed him through a table. Oh. This week, you, you know what you got to. One thing that I will say for as slimy and as sleazy as Eric Bischoff has always been, you have to give him a lot of credit when those two guys first came in because he took some bumps from them. Like when they first came in, they would crash the announce table like that. I mean, I'm just saying, like as far as going along with the storyline, you have to give that guy a lot of credit for letting them come in and do that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, he didn't have because to. Because trust them do me. That. Vince wasn't letting anybody run down to his announce table and power bomb him through an announce table. Yeah. I mean, you know, now he would do other things in the ring, but he wasn't doing it in that fashion. So, uh, again, you know, kind of foreseeing they didn't keep it going, but Eric Bischoff had something going there for a while with that whole angle. Oh, yeah. They Man. did. And I think we came out better in the wrestling world 
for it in the long run. Yep. Well, yeah, I mean, competition, like you said, it forced the hand of the WWF at the time. Mm -hmm. It's just like, and I do make sports references that are accurate. Because you know what Steven, I'll break it down for you after he says it. it. It's like when the NFL got a little stale and the AFL came along and for a while challenged them and almost surpassed them. And then it wasn't sustainable, and so they merged the two, and then you have one entity. Right now, there's nothing to really challenge the NFL. It would be good for another league to every once in a while challenge sta- status quo because competition helps drive. Yep. It's just like a, a guy that's your, your starting point guard. If he has no competition, maybe he doesn't work as hard. So it, it forces them to work harder. And so WWE got better, like you said, because mm-hmm. of that competition. But WCW, the model was failed. It, it had the NWO, and that was lightning in a bottle. Yep. And they luckily caught that. And then they really were never able to duplicate that again. Right. Yeah, and, and I mean, when you get when you have guys under contract who, in my contract, states that you hired somebody else, so my contract gets rewritten to make more money because now he's making money. This is a hater of Alabama football, right here. Oh, yeah. I'm pretty sure you're talking about Nick Saban. No. Oh, for real? <laughs> that, no, for real. Oh, you're w- about Nick Saban. No, for real. <laughs> WCW, Kevin Nash and Hulk Hogan and Scott Hall had contracts that when WCW hired someone else, like when Bret Hart came in making all this money, that their contracts had to immediately be rewrote so that they would make so much more money than Bret Hart because they had guaranteed contracts to be the highest paid guys in the company. Yeah, if- and you take those guys now and they have final say in their matches. How is that good for business? Well, in the, the long term, it's not. But when they're basically giving you a 16 share when you were getting something half that before they did yep. it. Yep. But you're no. right. It's not sustainable. Just like Nick and, Saban in Alabama gets right. another contract every time somebody gets paid higher yep. than he does. Right. And if you take uh, – and to that point, Vince McMahon told people when they left the company – he said, listen, I can't pay you that because I've got a roster full of other guys working as many dates as you. And if I pay you, guess what? They're all going to line up outside my door. And that's what happened. That's one thing that happened at WCW. Everybody came calling. But because they yep. did do that, Vince did start paying his wrestlers better eventually. No, he did. No, because no, they no. made more money. Right, because yeah. he had to. He had to. But I'm, but I'm just yes. saying. But to he would have never with, done that without right, that. Right, to start because he wouldn't have had to. He'd have been the biggest boy on the exactly. market. You can work for me or go to some small organization. I don't yeah. care. I'm on TV. It's monopoly. And now he is. Yep. Eventually, you know, the Monopoly then reforms into WWE. Eventually, the holding your hand long enough for most people pans out. And it, I think right now we're seeing a lull in the WWE we right are. now. It's, we a, are. it's one of those things where this is a trough period. This yep. is not a pinnacle period. We, we talked about it. We talked about it. You've got new guys coming in, and we've got to, we've got to have two or three years to see what these guys are going to grow into. And, I, and, I, and we always go through that. Every 10 to 15 years. There is not that electric superstar. I know Seth Rollins. I know you love him. And and he's got some good – I mean, he's he's solid. It's coming. But there is not that guy that's like, holy cow. There's not an NWO or Ric Flair or Hulk Hogan or a Triple H or Stone Rock. There's not. Not right now. No, but you got to remember, how did these guys get created? Most of these guys came in from a faction. Uh, Most of them came through a faction – to be created because they got paired with somebody, right? And one of, one or two of them stood out. But what, 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 seems have, to, what it seems to me right now, though, is the problem is if you go back, and this starts with my wrestling knowledge from when I started watching in the early '80s, the batons were always getting passed. There was always that next guy right, waiting, yep, yep. and then there was. This is a, a new period to me. It's a watershed moment because it's almost like there was a gap. Like Triple H was kind of there, but The Rock just left. Stone Cold got hurt. Shawn Michaels is gone. Well, this Hall of Nash got on. There was never these next guys up. Well, let, let and me, now they're trying to formulate them, but there was a gap in the in the, the lineage. To me, what happened, okay, they ran too long with the same guys. They should have put – they went through that WCW did it. Mm-hmm. They they should have pushed some of the younger guys earlier and start building them to be the main event guys because WWE did it with Jericho when he came over. They were like, you know what? Yes, I have Stone Cold, I have The Rock, I got Triple H, but now I'm gonna make Jericho. But you know, and and that's what they they're trying to catch up to now. There's certain guys you can make, and then there's certain guys that are just that great, and they just right. don't have those guys Here, right now. Well, yeah. I, I don't. We don't know. I think they're finally finding out now because now because you got to remember last year Lesnar had the title for a year. We didn't push 
a lot of guys know, to the top. But you push Chris I'm Jericho. I mean, your point of pushing Chris Jericho, like they, they, like the Y2J, and they push the hell out of Chris Jericho. Jericho's not on that level with Stone Cold and with The Rock and with Shawn Michaels. Uh, but, but, He's but, not that mm, guy. Here's the deal. What did WWE – do you remember the night that Jericho premiered? Who did he, he interrupt? With The Rock. Right. right. So, so I get what Stu is saying. But I'm saying – You had these guys here who brought no. other guys there for The Rock. Right. No, 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 no. That's these what guys I'm trying to good. say, dude. These guys are good. Don't get me wrong. But they're 1B. But Chris Jericho was 1B to everybody. What? To me. But he was a good enough talker to coach this. Now, let, I'll finish one statement real quick. I believe another thing that's happening in the company right now is we've turned into a world of me, 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 right. me, me, me. So nobody wants to go to a faction and build up with each exactly. other. And then when they do, they kill it too quick because it's all about me. Now all three of those four of those guys are starting over from scratch, and the crowd doesn't like half of them because of the character you give them that's- because they're not building people the right way. And – Guys aren't willing to bring other guys in to make it together because they're worried about their freaking spot, man. No, I was not saying Jericho was on the Rock's level. Okay, good. I was. That's not what I was saying. Okay. You misread that. Okay. Jericho I'm glad you clarified that for me. Well, I'm going to play, 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 because play. when the Rock, when the Rock Triple H Stone Cold brought people to their level to grow the company years to go, and now. John Cena didn't do that because he had Edge, he had Randy Orton, but they didn't push like but younger it was about guys me to too. go. But again, no, it was about me. That, no, Cena it was. was worried about a spot. And right, speaking, he was worried about that spot. word. But I'm saying, yeah, about the spot. They were worried about the spot, but you at the same time you got to grow the business. With other people, I really think they need to bring back something called like new attitude. They need right. to get back to that attitude era. Right. I, I I don't I don't know their their model, and they're making a crap load of money. Don't get me wrong; I mean, they're selling out arenas, pay per view. They're probably making more money than they've ever made. It just doesn't have that big well, time it's, feel it's, that it's had throughout my life. This is the reality based era. Everything's reality based. Everything's there's that's what we're in. But 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 here's the issue though. Wrestling can't be reality because it's fake. It's scripted. Reality for us day to day is not scripted. It's not fake. I live it every day. So that's the issue that we're in. You can't say it's reality because no offense. In reality, Seth Rollins has no business beating up Brock Lesnar. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. If you turn them loose in reality in a cage, he's not holding the candle to Brock Lesnar. So don't tell me that it's reality because it's not. Because I can promise you, I've watched Brock destroy grown men in the no, UFC no, who, who are talking, like It's reality based because of the stuff off, not in the ring. But, but what I'm telling okay, you, but, but, I'm but talking you can't about, mix the two though is what I'm saying. But they you have. Do that. They have. And but that's the problem. Work. But it, no, that's they have. It, it seemed like, I know what you're saying with the reality era, but the attitude era conveyed that perfect blend of what we thought was reality because we got rid of gimmicks, yet they're still characters, but they're more real, realistic. They're anti-heroes. They're, they're not this guy jumping around with bandanas on their head or yeah. wearing matching T-shirts. Right. they are still got their, their kind of edge persona, and I don't mean the wrestler edge. I'm just talking about their attitude and keep coming back to that word, and I know it's Department of Redund- Redundancy and, and, Department. And, and, and here's the deal, because back in the day when Ric Flair told you he was the man – yeah, he had the four horsemen, but he didn't have four foot tall JJ security do his dirty work. He had other grown men come help him do his dirty work to where you knew if I mess with that guy, that's the two guys I got to have. Now, when I look at Seth, oh, I get JJ security. And all everybody does is pop jokes about it. So it makes him not believable as the man. And that's the thing. If you're going to put a guy over, put him over the freaking moon, just like Stone Cold and all those guys, let him go. I think there's a lot of talent in the WWE, right. and I, but I think it's a lot of mid-level talent. They don't have those. You need these three or four superstars. Cena is kind of – he never really got that edge. The kids love him, but the that 18- to 35-year-old fan doesn't love him. Right. The Randy Orton, the same. Randy Orton never really great on the microphone. So Randy's got that whole, like, I'm going to kill – Triple H would be a great one, but he doesn't want to wrestle anymore. He's too. He can't. He, he, yeah, right. because he knows he's, his time is gone. He's right. Credit, credit, and, to him. and he shouldn't be. 
Right. I mean, but they that, don't have the that that yeah. upper echelon. But they've got a great middle of the car. But if part, they had those three or four guys, part of this is like we've talked about on the show before is creative. A lot of it is the creative part because they don't let these guys' well, character develop. Possibly, or they're just not the guys, and they they're not. It, in the but we yet. don't. If you don't put them, like we've had guys like Dolph Ziggler at the top of the mountain, and then two weeks later. He I think they're wasting There's Roman guys, Reigns. I no, think they're wasting that guy. They're wasting a lot of people. I think they. Uh, there's I mean, something they, they could do with him. Get him out of the fatigues. Get him. When the, you know, I, I, I think they, there's something you could do with that guy. Well, I, I just also think that you have to. Another thing that springboarded the Attitude Era was they used to talk about this was when a guy would get a pop or they would have a match, they would walk back through the curtain and look and say, by the way, uh, y'all are up next. Like, it was almost trash. Like, so the next two guys knew, hey, we got to go out and try to turn and a do house down because of what they just did. You don't have that anymore. Because no. they're all getting paid well. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Money <laughs> kills everything. That, that, no, that's no, the me no, reality. I don't, I don't think it's – I think that's a little <laughs> part of it. But here's another issue with it is, to what you're saying, you take a guy like Roman Reigns who's green and you, and you keep making him wrestle – Kane and Big Show, who nobody cares about. Instead of having him wrestle a Dean Ambrose or a Seth Rollins not a, that the crowd is trying to get invested in because one good thing about the Attitude Era, who was Stone Cold wrestling every night? The Rock, Triple H. Who were they wrestling? Stone Cold, Undertaker. Everybody that was relevant. You weren't putting them with guys who were past their prime every night or mid-card guys. You were letting the top of the mountain yep. guys. And your best guy other. right now, your flagship guy, doesn't wrestle but about half the year. And when I mean half the year, I mean like six events. Brock yeah. Lesnar never wrestles. Yeah. I mean, you get your top guy, your and, highest and, pay, and here, the pinnacle of your, your industry. And here's what's funny. When Brock shows up, you could argue the fact that he puts as many seats or butts at a pay-per-view as anybody else on the road, and that's what's funny. Oh, he does. That's Absolutely. what's funny. And, and look, that's what they're missing is the disconnect of that guy because everybody's tired of John Cena. Yeah. The only re- – and I'm going to go ahead and, and – People are going to totally disagree with this. The only reason that Kevin Owens is, is getting anything that he's getting is actually smart booking Anti. by having him go against Cena yep. because he's everything Cena's not. He's now, always you, been. Now, if you took that away and had him debut against someone else like an Adrian Neville from NXT, I'm telling you, half, you, half these people out there wouldn't care. They wouldn't. Now, that's called smart booking, though. I will give them a little credit for that. But, again, what are you going to do after Cena if he's not made? He, here's the thing. And that's my issue Look, because he's not really made. It's the storyline making him, not him making the storyline. Yeah. The mouth of the Carolinas has been very quiet in this conversation. He, I, I totally disagree. I want, I'm going to disagree with this for a minute. Look, Kevin Owens I – mean, and listen, would. Kevin – I know because you got – look, Kevin Owens and John Cena for the last two months has carried that company. I didn't with say their storyline, I didn't say they, they didn't. have. I gave them now, props for the storyline. Now, story now, they have put on two hell of a matches back to back pay per views. The best two matches. But that's not what I'm talking pay-per-view. about. I'm just saying. But you didn't listen you, to what I said. Okay. Well, you, what you're saying basically is, if Kevin Owens wasn't with John Cena, he'd be nothing. Right. I don't totally agree He would agree not with that. be as big as he is right now. Well, of course not. Right. I, I mean, no, you put no, no, me no, no. with no, no, no. Uh, but, but, Kobe but, Bryant. But, I wouldn't be as good that, at basketball. But that's the point. That's the you point. Might. That's the point that I'm making, <laughs> though, is that when guys like a Y2J came in, people like The Rock said, hey, come here. This is how this works. If you want to make it, do it or don't. I don't care. But when you get a guy like Kevin Owens, John Cena is doing that for him. I'm giving a lot of props, but I'm telling you, look how many guys from NXT have debuted right now that we don't care about. But that that's, goes back to my point, what I was saying a few minutes ago, four or five years ago, John Cena and some of these other guys would say, hey, you young guy, come here. Let's work together. Let's put on a hell of a show and make the business better. But, no, what they did is, okay, we'll keep shoving John Cena and Edge down your throat. Then you ain't going to grow the business. And then you'll bring in the part-time people like The Rock, like Brock Lesnar, who work all the main event shows, and you're not pushing the young guys. They're finally pushing the young guys now, and you're getting this period of, okay, we're waiting on somebody to stand out. Well, uh, but I'll say this. Here's the deal. Even some of these guys, when they put them in that position, 
they still don't stand no, out. No, no, you're issue. right. You're absolutely right. Some of them don't stand out. And, you know, for example, I've been reading SmackDown lately, what's been going on, not watching it. And it sounds more interesting than Raw yeah. lately, which is surprising. Well, I said it's not surprising because Raw has backed themselves into a corner. Yeah. With the same two or three guys. I just don't get that. I know people are like, well, they're pushing, they're pushing, they're pushing. I mean, the, the guys we talked about uh, that, that are days gone by, they caught on after a certain period of time, and it's like, okay, right. we see they can do it. I haven't seen those guys really exist right now in the WWE. Well, what I was trying to say is what they, has been happening is they'll go out and put on a heck of a pay-per-view, and then they take them off TV. Like Dolph. You know who was I'm right? Saying, who was who was show booking? Who was creating storylines in the in the Attitude Era? That would be Vince and Pat Patterson. Okay. They, they'll tell you they so, would, so, they sit at home drawing stuff up. But so at Triple the same H time, is failing at his job right now. No, I think Triple H now is like last week Raw. Who did he take last over week, for before Vince? Last week's so Vince Raw kind of aged out. But up. Vince is still involved. That's the problem. The business is starting to grow him by. Vince, last week's Raw was all Triple H. That was run 100% by Triple H. Right. And I think it was a lot better than the previous week. I don't know. I, I mean, you might not, but I thought Outside it was Outside of the last spot, it was a pretty lackluster show. Yeah. But, again, look at the bookies of who's together. Right. Oh, Bray Wyatt interrupts Roman Reigns. For what? Who is Bray Wyatt? Who has he beat? Roman Reigns Roman Reigns has won the Royal Rumble, competed at WrestleMania for a world title. Who is Bray Wyatt competing we, against? We have That's gone, my point. You, we, can't, you can't take a guy here and then bring him back down to here and expect him to go back to we, here. We have talked about that. Well, that's a ripple down effect from right. that happened WrestleMania right. two years ago right. when he lost to John Cena. Right. If you would have built him right and had him win, then you could – some credibility. No, but, but that's my point, though. You can't take a guy who's mid-level like Bray Wyatt, keep him at mid-level, but then take a guy you built to the top and then bring you back down to the – you can't You can't do that, man. Right. Got to give him legitimacy. Right. It doesn't work. You got to keep him in one place or the other. Mouth, what are you doing over there? The, Just waiting for the, the conversation. The problem with Roman Reigns is once, and I've told Stephen, well, I'm just told using you, him because it's no, Dolph too. It's no, all no, of no. It, I mean, it is, but what's going to happen with Roman Reigns and what they were doing? They were pushing him so fast that once he wins the title three or four times, people going to be like, "Oh, here we go again." And you can't, you can't do it too much, but you can't do it. You know, you got to do it more. You got yeah, anything I mean, to add? Over, can I talk now? If you can get, I mean, you can talk get it where you, you fit in, to. man. Hey, I didn't know. Wait, I could. wait, wait. Hold, hold on a second. I mean, Mike, I know. Mike is maybe, on. Maybe you need another vitamin Mike's C on. pill. I didn't know. Do you no. need some more goldfish? You feeling bad? I mean, you got yeah, goldfish. Just, you just waiting to talk do you, here. Do you want to spray more germs? Everybody was so angry. Hey, do you want to spray anything? Who's angry? It's passionate discussion. Who, I don't know who's angry. Passionate. Who's angry? <laughs> Hey, we got the he's best shirt. Li- he, he's little. If your voice goes up even a quarter of an octave, right. he thinks you're right. We have Ooh, the best you're shirt. You're really tr- struggle with me. Then, we right? have That's the why best little dogs shake. We yeah. have the best shirts in the business. Why do you think uh, we're angry? <laughs> little best shirts, little shirts in the business. I'd call that, but not best shirts in the business. Best shirt. I say this is not really little, sir. Obviously, you haven't took a good look at us, sir. <laughs> sir, there's nothing little about us. I don't, I don't know if that was a rib on me or not. Like I. Hey, just, respect, hey, say how respectful champions are. Yeah. No. Hey, we have some class and cloud about yeah. ourselves. I got a name hey, for us. I got a name for us. I got a name hey, for us. Just what tap is, out. What is it? What is it's it? a double entendre. The Doughboys. Oh. Oh. <laughs> really? The Doughboys? Because we're, we're, we're kind of doughy. Yeah. But we. Hey, I, guess, I guess they can use it because Johnny Manziel is not <laughs> yeah. using it anymore. That's right. So I Money. guess it's yeah. fair game. Hey, go, just go ahead and tap out, dude. Nah. Hey, go. Making it rain? Is that eating? What are you eating? I'm over hungry, there? man. Yeah. <laughs> Feed me Feed more. Me. <laughs> <laughs> Feed you more, totally, right? Back. We didn't just make that up, by the way. Okay. What sports figures do? Yeah. Um, yeah. Well. You, I'm just you, eating. You, you will know that one day. All um, right, go ahead. Dr- drop some knowledge. No, I'm Shot, good. Hurry I'm good. up. You want to say something? Boom, no, I'm good. Clack. Go ahead. He has I'm, nothing to say. I'm, I'm getting ready. To end now the show. I know why he had acid reflux that day we first did a recording because I got loud one time. Yeah. No. He was like, nothing to do. <laughs> we got to stop recording. Yeah. <laughs> Is that angry. what happened? He's no. really angry I, right now. No, he's not. Do you want to add anything seriously? We'll give you the floor for two minutes. No, I'm good. I'm good. Go ahead. No, nothing. Thirty seconds. Go ahead. You, you know it says mouth of the Carolinas. You should speak. 
Well, you know, there's nothing to say. I mean, you guys are right about it. It's not. Oh, it's we know. not the guy's fault. It's not. It's it's everybody's fault in the same way because they don't want to stand up for themselves to go and and they don't take the ball like Stone Cold did. They don't take the ball like The Rock. They're not taking the ball and running with it. Like Seth Rollins is doing great, but he could do better. Same thing with Roman Reigns. Same thing with Ambrose. They can all do better. But they don't – like, I don't know if it's the booking or not. Like, I don't know what it is. You don't know. It is the booking. That's what I think it is the booking. But at the same time, is it them that doesn't want to do it? That doesn't want to say, no, no I don't I like this. This is stupid. Let, let me tell you why it's both. Back in the day, people have always said this to Vince's credit. Everybody said – Vince always had an open door policy. Yeah. He would listen to anything you told him. Now, he may not do it, but they said he would listen. I don't think guys talk like that to Triple H. I don't think they say, hey, can I, like, seriously, can I sit down and talk to you for a minute? Yeah. Like, let's talk about what we're going to do. I don't think enough guys do that anymore. Yeah. And that's the difference in the, again, that's the difference in the guys that go here who care about what they're doing yeah. and the guys who want to stay here and just make money. So, so do you think nobody cares anymore? I don't think it's caring. I just think that they're afraid to step out of that comfort zone because people are worried they don't want to lose a they spot don't lose or, a job. or they don't they don't want to step on somebody's toes. Screw that, man. Yeah. Look yeah. at everybody in the wrestling business who's ever been made. Most of the times, more they times than not, toes. they stepped on somebody's toes along the yeah. way. And or that's got how their they leg got broke. There. You, right. Sometimes I mean, you got to push. Or their arm broke. I mean, sometimes you got to push to the front of the line. Yeah. yeah. And if you don't want to push to the front of the line, then go back to the back of the line. Yeah. I mean, think about it. If the, the TNA. If, th- think about it. If no. the, think about it. If the if. If the it factor doesn't push the world's greatest man, he wouldn't be the world's greatest man. If the world's That's greatest we man didn't together. make him the it factor, he right. wouldn't be who he That's is. That's why we work so well together. That's right. I'm, I'm confused. Who's the world's greatest man? I am. <laughs> yeah, like, I was like, wait. wait no, I'm you, the greatest. Are you talking to the champion? Because I, I don't champion. think a world greatest yeah, man can look, look be at the that world's... little kitty belt you have. It's better than your See, belt. We don't it's better than your imaginary belt uh, over no, there. Hey, hey no. buddy, that's a nice belt. Thank you. <laughs> nice belt. Thank I don't you. need to I carry my belts it. around. I <laughs> <laughs> I hey, answer, answer me this question, yeah, though. Um, uh, because you've, you've got a lot more faith. I'm a little more cynical than you are okay. as far as the direction of the company. Right. Um, you think that, that time and there, there is the crop there. Seth Rollins, and I know I keep going. I give you a yep. hard time about that because I know well, how I'm, I, I need this guy, man. But. Explain to me what he is supposed to be. Are they trying to make him kind of a pseudo Shawn Michaels? They are trying to make him Shawn Michaels. I wish they exactly. wouldn't do that. I wish Absolutely. they wouldn't do that. No, and, and that's today's society, though. We always push don't, to make the next. Then, uh, Let them be work. who they are. Look Seth at, Rollins needs for to example, be Seth Rollins. Look at Jordan Smith right, as an example. Jordan Smith needs to be Jordan Smith, not Tiger Woods. You know, the, these that, guys. That's golf, Stephen. Yeah, it's oh, golf. Okay. These guys need to grow. Okay, not sound you need like to golf. put these with young guys. This is why I hate Brock Lesnar being this match. They're not growing anything because if he loses a Lesnar, he's done. But what he's you, done. But what are you going to do with Lesnar? You, what would you do with Lesnar? Because he, I would have him fight guys like Lesnar, John Cena, Randy Orton needs to fight mid-level talent and make those guys. They don't need to be in the world title picture anymore. I mean, do you think that's more on Lesnar? It, it should be. This should be Roman Reigns versus yeah. Brock Lesnar, and the winner fights at SummerSlam. Who, Here, here's for the title. I'll say this really fast: If you're going to make Seth Rollins "quote unquote" the future and the guy, then back him as the guy exactly. and let him beat people as the guy, right. whether he cheats or not. Like, no. Think about Flair and the Horseman. The reason they used to keep titles is because they did whatever they had to do to keep well, it. So, I mean, again, if you're going to build Seth Rollins as the future and the head of the company, he's going to work hand-in-hand hand with Triple H and Stephanie, then you got to do that you, for him. you got to make him be convincing. There's something missing. He's not, see, he's see, not, convinc- here, he's here's not the thing. convincing. No, he's no, not convincing. Here, here's the thing, okay? He finally, finally had a – heel type of match when he beat Ambrose. That is how you win. When you're a heel, you win matches like that by right, doing – but, but, but that's, a, that's, what, I'm, that, like that's what I'm trying to say. I'm saying that is the, how you win, and he finally did that. So, you know, to answer your question, though, I think 
he needs to be with the other guys. He's got to evolve into different. Right. Into he's got to evolve. Get him away from Shawn Michaels. Right. Two point He needs to be him. Because that Reigns, ain't gonna happen. R- stop doing the Roman Reigns and John Cena, or Roman Reigns and The Rock. He's not those guys. He yeah. is Roman Reigns. Well, you're basically right. to me. You're basically trying to make Roman Reigns like Diesel two point oh. Yeah, I think like Roman. I think Roman Reigns match. needs to get a pair of tights. Um, trunks, yeah, right. trunks. Get out of the fatigues. Mm. Get out of the boots. I don't like. Well, I'm not digging the big I, box. I, I, I'll, I'll give you one better. Just take the vest off. The vest yeah. is killing me. The he vest. could le- he could le- he could leave the pants and the boots. The pants and the boots aren't the problem. It's that stupid silly vest. Yes. Even yeah. if he just took that off, you would be okay with everything I, else. Even two some bitches out I, hey, at a, in a parking lot, they're going to fight. What do they do first? They take their shirts off. Right. The they don't wear vests. Something I always hated is when in the Shield did it. When they split the group up, I hate when one person takes the music. I, I just, I don't like, I mean, Roman Reigns should have came out of that, had his own music, his different style, you know, because yeah. you're not in that group anymore. It's done. I mean, Seth Rollins rides his motorcycle to work every but, but day. But at least it's something different. <laughs> yeah. At least, yeah. Am, at no, least Ambrose has his own different thing. Yeah. They all grew <laughs> something else. Here's what's funny. Ambrose is basically taking the Brooklyn Brawler, the Brooklyn Brawler character yeah. but made it good. I said yeah. that. Yeah. What I said, he looks like the Brooklyn Brawler. But, right. he, yeah, he's, he's much better yeah. at that. But there's only so uh, – even even mankind, it, it runs its course the, the crazy. Yeah. The, the crazy is a, a cool gimmick. For a little while, but but Dean Ambrose needs to morph into more of a badass I, I, than, well, I'll tell than you, the I, crazy, unstable guy. I tell you what will help a crazy gimmick, and if you look at the guys who have been crazy or unstable, they have to win a world title. Like, they've got to have something like, oh, you didn't think I could make it? You didn't think I could keep yeah. it because I'm crazy? Right. Like, you got to do something to make it legit. But even then, I mean, it. Mick Foley, how many personas did he have? I mean, if, you can't – bad st- booking, though, with the personas. Yeah. If you would have just kept Mankind, he'd have been okay. He would have been fine. No. But I mean, look when, at Psycho but, Sid. But, he did but, it. But he was but, crazy. But then he came out as Mick Foley. I'm just but, saying. But, right, but here's the – you can't go from being Mankind to being this guy with an Undertaker get thrown over himself to being dude love. Because right. it doesn't work. Right. Because yeah. I know it's the same yeah, guy. Yeah, dude love that. That didn't work. I'm just saying as far as the crazy, like, unstable guy, that'll work for a little while. Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins, they are not who they need to be yet in their character personas to be that top-level guy. I, I, They're close. I do, There's I do, something missing with both I do of think guys. Dean Ambrose is – at his char- his character you think that's is better maturation. Fit. I think his character fit is better. I think there's still then, more maturation. No, I, I didn't say he's not growing. That's not what I'm saying. I think Ambrose has found his character, and I think it's perfect. I think Seth Rollins is still working on it. You know what the only thing that's Dean Ambrose point. needs to do? What you need to do needs is, to have a side chick. Well, that would be <laughs> cool. Um, Renee Young. No. Uh, so what, what, what you yeah. need to turn oh. Dean Ambrose into is you need to turn him into a cross between CM Punk and Stone Cold. Yeah. And what I mean by that is stop the crazy and make his promos real. Let him That's come, what I'm saying. You know, him, you know what him, you just let, did? Let him come make out. Make him a badass. Let him come out and call people out. You know, oh, Jay, you need JJ. Like, yeah. let him actually call him out on air, on television, because, and make the other guy rebuttal. Because you're my tag team partner, you know what you just did? What's that? You dropped a truth bomb. Yeah. You just dropped a truth bomb yeah. on the show. And then, and, then, right. and, and then in the same fold, if you want Seth Rollins to be this ultimate bad guy and be the heel, you got to get ready, Jason. Let him hold yeah. people's legs to win. Let right. him hold the rope. Right. Like, right. Have him win the right way. I agree. No, I agree. And, but he finally did it at a pay-per-view, and, but they did it too late. And yeah, stop having him wishy-washy about if he needs people. I know. Yeah. If you're going to be the guy, be the guy. You yeah. never heard Ric Flair complain about the horseman, whether the, he won or lost. Never. The, the yeah. one thing I will say about Monday Night Raw, I thought the ending was good. I mean, that, you want to be a bad guy, you want to be that way, that's – I, I, I didn't think it was good, sir. Jamie Noble almost died. Well, okay, that didn't, that didn't <laughs> you, make you, you, Jamie Noble uh, didn't die. He's fine. Where was Jim Ross when he said, oh, the bloody massacre? It's like a train right. wreck. <laughs> yeah. So, before we leave, we have to play the goodbye song. All right, this <laughs> you like this song, don't you? Oh yeah, it's Lattimore, man. Come yeah. on, it's you Benny, can't like Lattimore. It's Benny Come Lattimore, on. dude. Come 
I think, that dude's like 75 years old now. And he's still doing that. Don't yeah. let them go. <laughs> no, I'm hit you. Yeah. He's still doing it. <laughs> well, yeah, man. This week, <laughs> <laughs> this week, Samuel Shaw from TNA is gone. And TNA Gunner is no oh, longer TNA. Oh, thank you, God. Yeah. God. He, Gunner is gone. Finally, no more pictures of Gunner. Oh, look, I was on TNA. I'm going to sign this and give it to you. God. One guy I didn't like in TNA. I'm sorry. Who, Gunner? Yeah, I, I, because he never made it. Oh, I was a tag team champion. Good for you. He was uh, in the title. Pit. You met him. Why didn't you enjoy Gunner? He was a nice guy. Yeah, he's a, so what? Nice guys finish you did last. Interview, you did an interview yeah, with him. Yeah, and I so, didn't so, like him. I mean, at least I finished. That's right. Hey, stand by your convictions, brother. I'm yeah. not. No. No, stand by them, damn it. Not with Gunner, I don't like Gunner. That's because... what I'm saying. I'm backing you up. If you don't like Gunner, tell him yeah, you don't like Gunner. I don't like Gunner. Tell him to suck it. Suck it. What? Suck it. Tell I can't hear you. What you say? Suck it. You suck it. That's right. Suck it. <laughs> you bite it. That's yeah, my... Don't be talking to me that way. That's, That's my, my tag team partner. He talked <laughs> you out of the hell he wants to. Don't touch me. Do, okay. do you know who I am? <laughs> do you know who I am? You know no, who I am? I don't you care. Should. I'm don't the greatest care. man to ever live. Shut up. <laughs> All right. That's a funny one. Yeah, it is. It's true. <laughs> All right. Anything else you guys got to add? Yeah, I've got my mission. What's your mission? To make Tough him bad. that son of a bitch up right there. <laughs> you got a big job in front of you, buddy. He's going to be running through walls before too long. Yeah. <laughs> I've already done that. The only way he'll run through walls is if there's a burger on the other side. I don't eat burgers. Right. Joke's on you. Oh, that's great. That's on American, sir. No, that's, that's on American. I still eat hot dogs, and that's the most American thing ever. No, no, it's not. no. What apple, can you have? Apple, apple, apple pie. pie. Apple pie. Apple pie. Most American What's your ever, mouth, so. dude? I'm Bald seriously? eagles and apple pie are the two most American things that's ever. Right. Outside of the flag. And a hot dog. Right. Hot dogs no. good too. No. Bourbon. No. <laughs> All right, from stupendous, <laughs> from the bourbon. mouth of the Carolinas, and from JP's melting pot. You're listening to Wrestling with Attitude on Stitcher, Spreaker, and iTunes. Catch us next week. By the way, don't forget to wash your dirty heels. <laughs> Rolling Stones are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Oh.